This will be dive number four for 2016. Conditions are great, sunny, warm. I'm going to be wearing my Seawiscope eye, which is going to be nice. And we're going to begin in just a couple minutes. Okay, beginning. We're heading underwater again. Each one of these dives is different, each one unique. I don't know what I'll see, where I'll go exactly, even though it's the same place that I dive most of the time. You can see that I'm diving a double hose regulator from the 1950s called a Mistral. This is a vintage piece of diving gear, and then I come across uh, an eddy where there's a golf ball and a dead lamprey. Now you can see in the center a sculpin there, and right beside it there's the shell of uh, a crawfish. Now that's not a dead crawfish, that's the molted uh, outer skeleton of the crawfish. and another dead lamprey right there. The lampreys have spawned and died, and so they're becoming part of the river now. Downstream. Over the log, and then we're going to go under the rapids. As I come up over this rock, I see something that really surprises me. I'm looking at something I haven't seen before. This, this is different from what I normally see in the river. As I'm pulling these handfuls of lead sinkers out of that crevice, out of the sand, I'm thinking about the photo I took years ago of snails feeding on the lead and of the lead itself getting in the food chain of the river in that manner. I need to get this lead out of the river. Oh, my God. 
Look at that. Look at that. These lead fishing weights got there by fishermen fishing in these rocks for salmon and steelhead and losing their lines uh, when they tangled on the rocks. Then the floods come and this lead is heavy enough that it pushes them down to the lowest level. And I'm wondering what other crevices and areas of the river might have more lead then an invisible hand starts working on my camera. This is the currents and it shows how much power they actually have. My camera is on my helmet and it's sitting on the bottom and it moves around with the currents. But the lead here is amazing, just amazing, and I've got to get rid of it.
now it's time to get to the surface and I'm very, very heavy. This is going to be a difficult swim even though it's only about 22 feet deep here. So it's going to take me a little while. Finally, I'm up and I can unload the lead that I've got. Wow, this was unexpected. That was a rock, by the way. <laughs> Round one I wanted to save. But take a look at how much lead that I pulled out. I weighed it later and it was 8 pounds of lead, which is about 3.6 kilograms of lead. And that was just in that small amount of time that I was pulling it out of that one crevice underneath that rock. That's just amazing to me, just amazing. I think it's time to reevaluate our fishing strategies and get the lead out of fishing. Uh, this can only harm the uh, food chain and the ecosystem in the river and I don't know if it can be directly transmitted into the water or not. Uh, it probably depends a little bit upon the pH of the water but you know it's just not good to have this much lead in the river and if it's this much in this one spot I wonder how much is in the whole river. Anyway it's time for me to resume my dive, and I'm leaving the lead up there. I'll pick it up later and bring it home. Bye-bye.